When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Hi, I'm Amber of the Little Reeser House, where we celebrate the little things that make our house our home. Ever since my husband and I got married nearly seven years ago, we have been using a set of wooden crates beside our bed as our bedside tables as kind of a quick fix bedside table solution. They have done their job, but I think it is finally about time to upgrade those bedside tables into something that feels a little bit more sophisticated and complete. Last fall, I found this set of bedside tables on our local buy and sell for $15 for the pair. I scooped them up and knew that they would be the perfect project piece. So in today's video, I'm going to bring you along to show you how I refinished them to turn them into our dream set of modern traditional bedside tables. Let's get into it. These tables were pretty basic. They felt clunky and had a bit of damage to the veneer, but I liked that they had drawers for some much needed closed storage and I could see the potential in them to feel more modern with the square shape. And I liked the traditional element of the pretty trim work. They just needed a little TLC. I thought that the best way to elevate these bedside tables would be to add some legs. I wanted to build and attach some simple legs to the bottoms to bump them up off the ground a little bit and then paint them one consistent color to highlight the trim. And I wanted to finish them off by adding some traditional gold ball knobs to each drawer. To get started, I flipped the bedside tables over to remove some of the extra hardware like the feet support and anti-scratch pads. I wanted to cut some of the skirting off the bottom of the units to clean up the lines a little bit, and so these pieces had to come off to make way for the new legs. I used a straight piece of wood as a fence to run my circular saw up against and was careful to measure really carefully so that I was cutting off the skirting in a perfectly straight line. This still left me with a little bit of overhang at the bottom so that I could still attach and hide the legs beneath it. To make the legs, I used two two foot pieces of two by two poplar. That is a lot of twos. My units aren't very heavy, but if they were, I probably would have gone for a red oak instead. I decided how high I wanted to bump my units off the ground and found a measurement for the legs from there. I referenced a tutorial by the DIY wife here on YouTube to make a special detail on my front legs, so I will link that below for you to check out. Essentially, I cut off a small piece at the bottom to create a bit of visual interest using my miter saw. You have to be very careful doing this, so I recommend watching her video and hearing her tips if you want to attempt this yourself. To fasten the legs, I used the newest addition to my tools, a small Craig jig. This little guy took me a while to figure out, so I am not even going to attempt to explain it here, but essentially it set me up to be able to attach my legs from the inside so that I wouldn't have to screw any holes on the outside to fill later. That simple little addition of some legs to add some height already made a huge difference in the look of these bedside tables. Before I could paint, I had a few more things to do to get these tables ready. First and foremost, cleaning them. These had been sitting in my garage over the winter and spring so they were full of cobwebs and drywall dust and all kinds of other things. The backside of the units were open so I was able to use our shop vac to clean them out really well. And just as a note, the drawers were not removable without fully taking apart their sliding mechanism so I just opted to work with them still intact. I also scrubbed them down using some Dawn dish soap, warm water, and a lightly abrasive sponge. If you are going to paint anything, it is so important to thoroughly clean it first so you can get rid of any grime and dirt that would bleed through your paint. I also made sure to wipe everything down again with a damp cloth to remove any soap residue, and at this point I removed the old hardware too. As you saw, the back of the units were completely open, so I used some scrap quarter inch plywood pieces I had to close them up. This is just purely practical to prevent any dust from settling inside once they are living in our bedroom. Another important piece of prep you should do before painting any furniture is to give everything a scuff sand. It's really quick and easy, but gives your primer a little bit of grit to grab onto so that it adheres better and holds up longer. 
I used a 180 grit sandpaper and just went over the surface on each table really quickly. And of course, made sure to wipe off all of my sanding dust afterwards. Finally, I just had to fill a few holes and areas that were damaged. I used a couple of coats of spackle with sanding in between to fill the old hardware holes and some of the cracks where the pieces of wood met. I think that filling these cracks is probably not necessary, but it will make the entire finished piece feel more substantial, elevated, and clean, so I went for it. This product sands really easily, and so you only need a light hand and a really fine grit sandpaper to smooth it out. If you have bigger areas to fill like an old hardware hole, it may require a few coats to get it really flush with the rest of the surface. The time had come for paint. I knew this was where the magic was going to happen and these were really going to stand out. But to ensure my finish would last, I first needed to coat the pieces in a good primer. I like using the Sincer Bin Shellac based primer because the shellac locks in any stains so they don't bleed through to your paint. And because it's shellac, it is really hard to clean up, so I like to use a tinfoil lined paint tray and a crappy brush I can just toss when I'm finished with it. It's also best to work with this product outdoors as it has a really strong odor. I gave everything a nice even coat of primer, being careful to get into every nook and cranny. Once the primer had dried, I did a once over with a high grit sandpaper to smooth out any bumps or brush strokes in the finish. I also sanded down my legs, which ideally I should have done sooner in the process. It was time to paint. I decided on this really beautiful neutral grayish color called Sandstone by House and Canvas. This is a chalk style paint that is really thick and smooth. I'll link all the products I used in the description box below. I started on the underside and painted the legs first. My pieces had so much trim work and so I opted to use a brush to paint the entire thing, but a roller would work well on flat areas if you prefer that. It took a while, but I took my time to ensure I wasn't leaving paint drips or thick brush strokes. I made sure that everything fully dried for a couple of hours and then recoated it all again. In some areas, I even ended up doing three coats for a really even coverage, and I let the tables dry for a couple of days before picking back up on it again. By this point, I only had a few finishing touches to do. I made myself a little jig using a scrap piece of plywood in order to consistently drill my hardware holes on each drawer. By this point, I decided to bring the pieces inside the house so I could finish the top coat without having any dust or small bugs sticking to it. I used the house and canvas flat finish top coat to cover the entire surface. This product is easy to work with, but you do have to be careful not to repeatedly go over your brush strokes. It went on just very nice and shiny, but dried to a really flat finish. I added some felt furniture pads to the bottoms of my legs so they wouldn't scratch our floors, and some fresh liner to each drawer. And finally, the hardware. I found this simple gold ball hardware at Home Depot for a really affordable price. Ideally, I would have loved for these to be a warmer gold tone, but here in Canada, our options have been pretty limited during this pandemic, so I decided to just go with these for now, and I can always switch them out down the road. This shape is so classic and really brought that modern, traditional look I was going for. It was finally time to move them into our bedroom, so let's just remember where we started with these tables. And here they are now! I am so happy with how these pieces turned out. For only $15 and a little bit of time and effort, the payoff is huge. I love having drawers beside our bed so we can hide all of our unsightly books and knickknacks and the style just perfectly complements where I want to take our bedroom design moving forward. It really goes to show you that you don't need a lot of money to make your home dreams come true. You really just need to see a little bit of potential in the little things. I hope you enjoyed joining me in this process today. If you liked this video, make sure you like it and just know that every like, comment, and share goes a really long way in helping us on our YouTube journey. If you want to follow along with us, you can follow us on Instagram or our blog. I'll link both down below, or you can subscribe right here on YouTube and you will get our updated videos whenever they come out. 
We really appreciate you and hope that you remember that joy is often found in the little things like bringing some new life to an old pair of bedside tables. Bye friends.